Okay, so in order to do transformations of the sine and cosine graphs, we have to be familiar with this graph of sine of x and the graph of cosine of x. So let's start with the graph of y equals sine of x. So this goes on and on and on and on. Okay, so it's called a periodic function. Every two pi units, the graph of y equals sine of x repeats. And so this length right here is called the period. Okay, so the period of y equals sine x is 2 pi. Um, another way to think of the period is it's the length of one full cycle. So how far along the x-axis we have to go to complete one full cycle. This distance right here from the x-axis to the highest point is called the amplitude. Okay, so the highest point on the graph of y equals sine of x is 1. So the amplitude of y equals sine of x is 1. Okay, so the key to graphing sine and cosine functions is to be able to graph one cycle and then it keeps repeating, repeating in the exact same fashion. Okay, in general, the easiest way to complete a cycle, to graph one full cycle, is to think about these five key points. If we can plot, if we can plot these five key points, then it's very easy to get the graph. Okay, so the five key points are the three x-intercepts of the cycle, and the maximum and the minimum of the cycle. Okay, these five key points happen at intervals of one-fourth of the period. Okay, so the way the sine graph goes is it starts on the x-axis at x equals zero. One-fourth of the way across the period, it's at the high point. Halfway across, it's back at the x-axis. Three-fourths of the way across, it's down at the low point. And then at the end, it's back at the x-axis. Okay, let's sketch the graph of y equals 3 times the sine of 2x. So you notice here we have an, a 3 and a 2 that we didn't have in the original function. Let's think about what multiplying this x by the 2 does. What it does is it scrunches the graph of sine of x in the horizontal direction. Okay, so it scrunches it by a factor of 2. So instead of having a period of 2 pi, it's going to be half of that. Okay, it's scrunching it by a factor of 2. So the period of this guy then is 2 pi divided by this number. Because again, that's how much, it, how much it's being scrunched by. Okay, so that's pi. Okay, so the period of sine of 2x is equal to pi. Now multiplying the sine of 2x by 3 stretches it vertically. So instead of having an amplitude of 1, we're going to have an amplitude of 3. It's stretching it up this way by 3 and stretching it down that way by a factor of 3. Okay, now that we have these two pieces of information, it's really easy to get the graph of this. Okay, so we're going to start by marking off the period, which is pi. Okay, now because the five key points happen at intervals of one-fourth of the period, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this interval and break it into four equal pieces. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. The length of each of those pieces, since we're taking zero to pi and dividing it into four pieces, each piece is going to have a width of pi divided by four. So this is pi divided by four. This is another pi divided by four away from here. So pi divided by four plus pi divided by four is pi divided by two. And then we add another pi divided by 4, so it gets us to 3 pi divided by 4. And then another pi divided by 4 added to this takes us to 4 pi over 4, which is pi, which is exactly where we should be. Okay, so again, mark off the period, then divide it, by, uh, divide it into 4 equal pieces. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark off the amplitude. Okay, the amplitude is equal to 3, so the highest that we're going to go is 3. 
and the lowest that we're going to go is negative 3. Okay, so you see here in the sine graph, y equals sine of x, we went from the x-axis to the max, back to the x-axis, to the min, back to the x-axis. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Okay, so at the beginning of the period, we're at the origin. One-fourth of the way across, we're up here. Halfway across, we're there. Three-quarter of the way across, we're at the minimum. And at the end, we're back on the x-axis. So this here is one full cycle of the graph of 3 sine of 2x. Okay, why don't you guys press pause and complete one more cycle of this graph. Okay, so one more cycle has still a period of pi, so we're going to mark off another period and divide it into four pieces. So those are 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, which is actually 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and then back at 2 pi. Now we do our five key points. This is the beginning, up at the max, back at zero, down at the min, back at zero, And I didn't go through that, but pretend that I did. Okay, that's another cycle. So this is going to keep going on and on. Okay, so right here. That is the graph of y equals 3 times the sine of 2x. Okay, press pause while you work on the graph of y equals 2 times the sine of 4x. So you should have found that the period is pi divided by 2, because it's 2 pi divided by this number, and the amplitude is 2, because this 2 out front means we're going to stretch the sine graph vertically by a factor of 2. Okay, so next you mark off the period and divide it into four equal pieces. Okay, so now each piece here has a length which is one-fourth of the period. So that's pi over 8, then 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, and then 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. Next, you should have marked off the amplitude, and then your five key points. Then you just graph it. Okay, so there's one full cycle, and then we, re we just repeat it for another full cycle. We just keep adding... To get the next mark in line, we just keep adding pi over 8. Okay, so here we have two full cycles of the graph of y equals sine of, uh, 2 times the sine of 4x. Okay, in the last two examples, I showed you some specific examples of finding the period and the amplitude. In general, if you have y equals a sine of bx or y equals a cosine of bx, the amplitude of each of these is the absolute value of this coefficient, the absolute value of a, the period is 2 pi over the absolute value of this number. Okay, so 2 pi over the absolute value of b.